Imagine traveling through space in a galaxy far, far away, and all of a sudden you run into Godzilla. In this video, we will discuss how the G-Man would look if he appeared in Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, and in Star Wars. Watch as Goji Center joins forces with Dangerville, KNO, and Altiori to bring these new versions of Godzilla to life. We will discuss its abilities, physical appearances, and powers that will make these versions of Godzilla fitting for each cinematic universe. So sit back and stay with us until the end as we reveal Godzilla in Middle-Earth, Westeros, and in another universe. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? You heard Steve, and today we are going to talk about Godzilla and how he will look like in Star Wars, Westeros, and Middle-Earth. So today we have the boys from Dangerville, Jacob and Al, What's up? How Hello. you guys doing? <laughs> We're doing good. Glad to be here awesome. once again. Got some cool terrible. ideas. Terrible. I'm doing terrible. He's doing terrible. Well, you're going to do this I mean, anyway, I'm, I'm, I mean, good. Sorry. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> yeah. Um, so also we have Jacob from Kaiju News Outlet and Al Tiori. So how are you guys doing? Doing amazing. And I'm really happy to have all of you guys here today. So you know what? We're just going to get right to it. Yay. We're stand. We're good. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and start with Middle Earth. So for those that have never heard about this before, this is where most of the events of Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit takes place. And for those people that are really like knowledgeable about this universe, we of course, we already know about smog. We know about the giant elephants and all the other mystical creatures. So we're talking about Godzilla right now. And how do you guys think Godzilla will fit in this universe? Is he going to be a bad guy or is he going to be a good guy? What do you guys think? knowing Godzilla and how he would fit here. <laughs> Ooh, I would like to take this one first, guys, if you don't mind. Oh, Go please. on. please. All right. So, so, okay. So I'm a pretty big Lord of the Rings, Middle Earth guy. So I've been kind of like, I got my sheet of paper here. I've got some rather interesting notes here. So you just nice. brought up a good point of saying, would Godzilla be a good guy or a bad guy? So if there was a Godzilla in the Middle Earth Tolkien universe, he would have to be something along the lines of what... Uh, Gandalf is, which is a Maiar, I believe is how you pronounce it. Pretty much saying he's mm -hmm. kind of like a demigod. He's kind of like, I guess there's a lot of like uh, religious stuff thrown in that like Gandalf is kind of like a Jesus sort of figure in, in their own mm -hmm. way. So Godzilla would also be in that sort of uh, kind of semi-god-like character. So that's kind of some his sort own. of Yeah, some yeah, sort of deity. Some sort of deity. A, a better example is like the Balrog, except the Balrog's pure evil. Whereas Gandalf, I, not Gandalf, whereas Godzilla, I don't think he would be bad uh, in Middle Earth. I think he would be very, very like how he is always, just or usually like very neutral. Um, size wise, I'd probably say he'd be about 150 feet, kind of like the classic uh, Toho style, because anything bigger than that would start being crazy i know in caligon is supposed to be like mountains and all that but most of the creatures aren't that huge uh mm -hmm. he could grow bigger but i like him at 150 feet now i know you remember saying what would his atomic breath look like i think it would probably have to look more like fire than an actual atomic beam because mm -hmm. it's it's you know it's more of like a mythical dragon sort of sort of world so overall he'd be a recluse he'd be neutral uh he would look uh, kind of exactly like how he does now because uh, the monster well at least in the monster verse because the monster verse Godzilla is just you know kind of mm -hmm. based on real life living you know the earth and middle earth is very one with nature so yeah that's kind of my quick quick kind of thing he'd be like Gandalf just you know Godzilla right <laughs> would, he be, would he be like would he be like thin like kind of like the Balrog or would he be like thick uh, I mean, that's that's. I guess he could go either way. If I, I mean, he could really just. I would think he'd probably be thinner because he'd have a little bit more of like a dragony look to him. I'd imagine. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Mm -hmm. More towards like like more muscular, thinner. Uh, I guess less fat, maybe less thick, like you guys are saying. Yeah, because mm -hmm, like in the MonsterVerse, we see Godzilla. I mean, he's more on the thicker side, but he's also really muscular too. He's kind of so, like a big giant, like power lifter. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So probably a little bit cut down. Yeah. And one last thing, because the Balrog's cool, and Godzilla's even more cool. Blue fires like spewing off around his back and stuff constantly. You know how the Balrog's always on fire, except with mm -hmm. Godzilla, it's blue atomic fire. He's a little skinnier. 
He's got maybe a couple horns sticking up because he's a little bit more like a dragon because this is like, you know, medieval fantasy. And there you go. That's my that's my view on him in Middle Earth. I'll let one of you guys go next. Yeah, I'm I'm a little bit troubled with the mix of blue uh, on his dorsal plates. And I'm trying to remember what you said. Uh, did you say like he gives out like fire, like red or orange fire? Or is it like also blue I, I forgot it can be it can be blue it can be red it can be anything i'm just sticking since godzilla normally has his blue atomic powers so in the balrog likes to have the flames that are coming up his back uh and you'll find you know the flames are all around him so if this godzilla in middle earth is a deity like the balrog mm -hmm. we can throw in there that he's got some maybe nicer colors maybe some blue and a little bit of green in there i guess uh, based on the uh you know the kind of terrain that's in middle earth i think it would be quite a lot of like volcano-ish kind of influences true. so say if you like might leave some like fiery you know debris like as in his wake you know like on his footsteps they might still be on fire like there's a kind of like that mythical uh magic kind of aspect to him so it would be like you know how godzilla leaves <laughs> radiation behind and this this time it's like fire uh and the creature i was mainly looking at for like physical appearance was kind of like the fall beast you know the, the dragony kind of creatures oh, yeah. that we see in lord of the rings they've got like mm -hmm. this almost shark like color palette where it's like gray on the top and up top and kind of lighter gray underneath and that's to blend in with you know the the rocky mountainous terrain and i think godzilla would kind of have that a similar attribute, you know. Aren't there these tree creatures in Lord of the Rings that they were riding on the at one point? Yes, the ants. Yes. I was thinking, honestly, for me personally, I just feel like Godzilla in Middle Earth would look like Godzilla Earth. He would be a force of nature, oh. and he would just be one of those ancient, you know, deities like you explained. He would be wooden but not like completely made of wood, but kind of like those tree creatures, the ants that you were talking about. He'd be slow moving, but very, very powerful, but also very gentle. So, but then he's the kind of creature that if anyone messes with him and gets him angry, everyone's like, no, we gotta appease him because then he could actually destroy the whole area. Um, that's what I think of. I don't think of him like radioactive or anything like that. I think of him more of like a magical, mystical creature that would live in the world that the ends live in no yeah I, I agree with that because with what you were mentioning uh danger build jacob and with godzilla earth it kind of uh I, I know godzilla earth looks more like he's made out of like some like you know twisted it's tree. like a plant knife yeah right? mm -hmm. yeah but i think they're aesthetically you could be able to mix those into something that works and you can mix these into something that works. Check this out. This version of Godzilla is probably not as large as the other big Gs like in Godzilla Earth or Legendary's incarnation. This Godzilla is more scaled to its surroundings, measuring anywhere between 150 to 200 feet in height. This Godzilla could take a more grotesque and organic look, similar to what we saw in Godzilla Earth, and slightly volcanic in nature, at least in some parts of its body. Its dragon-like features can be seen in some parts of its body, such as its dorsals, and maybe even some horned features on its brows. The magical aesthetic can be seen in how its dorsals glow, perhaps with a few color variations, and maybe also seen in its atomic breath. This is truly a unique Godzilla. But what if we travel to Westeros? What would the G-Man look like there? We're going to go ahead and move on to Game of Thrones, Westeros. So, uh, yes, as we know, Westeros is... Uh, kind of like a landform that is shaped like uh, Great Britain. Am I correct here? Yeah, kind of. Uh, yeah, kind of. I think it's yeah. based. Yeah, I think it's based off of that. And we don't see too many uh, monsters here on Game of Thrones, but we do see a lot of dragons, a lot of serpents, and a lot of other, uh, you know, semi-mythical creatures here. Well, most of what we see in the show, um, I know there's different types of creatures in the book, but um, in the show, the most outlandish mythical creature that you see are the dragons that's right. the main focus everything else has kind of like this magical uh aspect to it they're usually humanoid figures like the what are they called again the tree elf people they're the ones that made the white walkers in the first place oh fight like the, first the, men. The, the, the girls there's something yeah something they look like they're made of wood or something yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah so you have that and then you have these white walkers um, everything else, every other creature seems to be like an offshoot of that. You have these undead horses and 
undead bears and stuff, but they're usually just regular animals. So I think if Godzilla was going to be in this universe, he would look more mm -hmm. animalistic um, and less... He would be more realistic, grounded in reality. Because funny enough, when I was looking at one of the behind the scenes for the Game of Thrones, they wanted... The people mm -hmm. who designed the dragons wanted them to be more believable as creatures that could have existed. They don't just breathe fire like Disney dragons do. They actually have liquid that comes out of two sides of their mouths that hits and ignites. Um, mm -hmm. They can be killed very easily. They don't have hard scales that protect them unless they're wearing armor. So I think if Godzilla were to be a part of this, he would be kind of another uh, breed or species of dragon, maybe a wingless dragon with slimmer features. He'd probably be able to spew fire or Honestly, it would probably be another species of dragon that could spew acid or something else just for dramatic effect. Kind of like mm -hmm. that how to train your dragon type of situation where you have different dragons and based on their environment or what they hunt, they have different means of spewing certain things out of their mouth. It doesn't always have to be fire. So I think he'd be smaller. He wouldn't be as large as we see him even in the legendary. Um, and like Viserion, the dragon who got changed, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry for spoiling it for anyone. <laughs> but the dragon that got changed over by the White Walker, the stuff that he spews will change based on what side that he's on. So if he's just normal, he'd probably just spew acid or fire. If he gets taken by the White Walkers, then it would look different. But I just think he would be more Sweet. grounded in reality, um, even more so than what we see in the legendary movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm curious as to where he would live. Would he live more like up north where it's icy or would he still maintain his aquatic? He would still uh, maintain his aquatic. I could see that being a thing because you remember there's a whole lot of sea in the Game of Thrones universe as well and people don't really explore that. But I think that it would be interesting because you have the dragons for the Targaryens. I think it would be mm -hmm. interesting to see that the, uh, oh my God, what are they called? The people who uh, have the ships... Uh, oh, the guy who iron, got his balls chopped off. Iron, uh, 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 the Theon Greyjoy. Iron yeah, the Ironborn. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the Iron yeah. guys. I, I think it would be interesting if we see them also have their own type of creature, like a sea creature that probably, uh, that story is handed down from generations, a leviathan uh, that lives out there. That leviathan would probably be Godzilla. Does, does yeah. Game of Thrones have like an equivalent to Loch Ness that he could live in? Uh, no, they don't really focus on that, no. Of. I mean... I'm sure there is, but you don't really hear about that. There is something I mean, that comes up in Game of Thrones towards the end is what's west of Westeros? Well, maybe uh, Godzilla. Yeah. Maybe Godzilla I think they is west are of going Westeros. Yeah, the south. yeah, yeah that, we don't that's know a good the concept. Other parts yeah, of the planet or the globe is. It's kind of like the Middle Earth once again. It's like we're literally on just like the corner of a country, and the rest of the entire globe is like unknown. So yeah, you know, we haven't explored a whole lot of it yet. Mm -hmm. And Drogon, yeah. I think Drogon was actually going there. Wasn't he going south? I think at the end of the I think movie. They said he's going east, which, you know, he could, who knows? Maybe, maybe he's going, they'd be like, Godzilla, look, they killed my queen mother. Uh, dang, I need your help. And that's what this new series is going to be. Exactly. Uh, let, let's go ahead and answer these questions. Would he be a protagonist, antagonist, or just simply a force of nature? I think he'd also be a force of nature, to be honest. Just, in that just, world, so, just minding it, his own business, yeah. The yeah, dragons would, are like kind of a force of nature because But they, they can were, be tamed. Yeah, they can be tamed, but they only fight for who they're loyal to. So if you notice in the story, the Targaryens, uh, or the people who tamed the dragons, that whole sect of people, started warring against each other. So the dragons weren't good or bad, it they were just fighting for whoever their masters were and they were forced to live in captivity. They even mentioned that as the dragons were kept in captivity, they got smaller and smaller and smaller. So they were just normal creatures that were caught, and then these other people forged magic in with the dragons so the dragons would obey them. They were just minding mm -hmm. their business before that. So the dragons are neither good or bad. They're just dragons. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think it's more like you just like a regular creature. Yeah, it's like a creature that you might want to be on his good side. Yeah. So yeah, you don't want to try okay. to like beat him or anything or cause him any harm. You want to make it's like mm -hmm. a, it, it'd be much more like an animal in Game of Thrones. He'd be like probably just uh, you know 
you made a good point about the whole growing thing. So if he is somewhere out else out in this planet and he hasn't been chained in and he's been free for tens of thousands of years, hence the reason why he's so big. Maybe he he probably wouldn't be huge again. I'd say at the most he'd be as tall as the the wall in Game of Thrones, however tall that is, maybe like half of that, just to give you a little bit of a size range. That would probably be good for him. And uh, he'd probably just be a force of nature, because that's something that in Game of Thrones is pretty big. You know, they they play on the whole like winter is coming, like nature is coming, the the sea is gonna take you, this is gonna take you. So maybe eventually, uh, you know, when the people of the world start getting too corrupt and too greedy or whatever happens, Godzilla would come in to kind of Godzilla is oh. coming. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Godzilla too. is coming. <laughs> I think, uh, you know how Godzilla has an ability to regenerate really quickly and have radioactivity and all that stuff? I mm -hmm. think that wouldn't be the case in Game of Thrones because seeing how the dragons and other animals are easy to kill, unless he's imbued with magic, I would see him as, oh, this huge creature. But if you have that, that green wildfire thing that, that, uh, that science guy made, you could kill him. He could make something to kill Godzilla quite easily. And it would probably be hard to take down a creature like that but he could still die a lot easier than he would in his world. He just from what I've invincible. seen in Game of Thrones. Yeah. What if Godzilla is the Lord of Light? Holy oh dear. Jeez. <laughs> I don't know. I just I just thought about that. I'm like, holy shit, that would be a massive plot twist. That would be a plot. I think you're on to something. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be cool. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. One wouldn't it also be interesting Ooh. if he was the only creature, though, that the White Walkers could not turn? Oh, and they're cool. running away from Godzilla, yeah, and that's, like that's why the they're trying to get over of. the wall. <laughs> Tries, yeah, they're trying to run away because he's the new one. So Godzilla is coming for Winter, hence the reason why Winter was coming for the rest of the sheets. We're on to it. We got to figure it out. We do. <laughs> Could you imagine a zombie Godzilla, though? I'm just putting that Oh, out my there. God, yes. Oh. There is yes. another side note. Yes, <laughs> that, that is another one. That, that's, ooh, Scary. Zombie Godzilla could be a whole other series in its own. I know that that actually sounds good. You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking that this video should have uh, two Westeros Godzillas, like a zombie version, <laughs> or like oh, a, yeah. <laughs> that'd be together. cool. Yeah, we, we, well, I'll take a look at that. A Godzilla found in Westeros would look like a hybrid dragon that could dwell in the sea and come up to land if need be. This animal would pick up on the physical attributes found in sea dragons and other sea-dwelling creatures, with its gills being a bit more pronounced, perhaps more webbed appendages. Being intelligent creatures, the humans that reside close to these creatures would treat them with respect, almost trying to remain on their good side. This animal would also be like the other dragons as they can also be more vulnerable and capable of being damaged by specialized weaponry. But we discussed another version of Godzilla. This Godzilla would be the culprit behind why these guys are so adamant on getting over this wall. Maybe this is the real danger. This snowy, zombie-like Godzilla would be large enough to cause an entire army of whites to flee, spewing blue fire so hot that it could destroy anything with ease. But would a Star Wars Godzilla be more dangerous? We're gonna move on to the final uh, universe, literally. Somewhere in a galaxy far, far away, <laughs> Star Wars. Now this one's, yep. This one's really interesting because we can't say that Godzilla is from one place or another. There's like, many planets you know there are some animals that live in outer space you know so what do we think about this right here well i think he could look like just about anything but i mean the the this as far i guess sidetrack slightly but as far as the setting for what godzilla would be in i think dave filoni did a pretty darn good job of that in the clone wars with the zilla beast arc those two episodes, because this literally has everything from Godzilla and Kong cameos to Mazer tanks practically. So I think if you're looking for the setting, it would be like that. But as far as Godzilla's actual appearance, the one monster that for some reason just someone has popped into my head recently what is, um, I believe it's Gore, which is General Grievous's like lair oh, guardian yes. from the Clone yes. Wars episode where they invade his um, lair. Uh, and it's not that large of a monster, but it's just like the roof, like it's a bipedal, I'm pretty sure, beast. 
and just has that like ruthless mentality that almost like a line of like a GMK Godzilla just a little bit. So that's just kind of been floating in my head a little bit as, as far as what I may think of as Godzilla in the Star Wars universe. I really, really liked Gore. I think out of all the animals in Clone Wars, uh, Zilla Beast and Gore were my favorite. They just look really unique. I'd agree. And, you know, I, I like how aggressive Gore was. And I hated that they had to kill him off, like, as soon as he showed up. But, oh, I know. <laughs> like, it's like the ring. But uh, I was cheering for him. Mm -hmm. Here's right. an interesting <laughs> note to add for the Star Wars thing. So Godzilla is pretty clever. Like he's definitely a sentient being in all his forms. So in the Star Wars universe, it's limitless, right? Mm -hmm. So who's to say that, you know, in, in our last two with Middle Earth and Westeros, we pretty much just made uh, Godzilla either pretty much pure neutral, like he's an animal in Westeros and Middle Earth, he'd probably be leaning towards like almost like a, a neutral good guy. What if Godzilla in Star Wars is an intelligent animal, which are shown throughout the series? There's all sorts of animals that speak and they have, you know, crazy psychic powers oh God, and all was... that. What if Godzilla is a Sith and he's just pure evil and smart? Like you said, the GMK, like that's pretty much the most evil Godzilla in the Star Wars universe. He could be force sensitive because he's intelligent yeah. enough, potentially. And Darth that would Godzilla. Be Darth Zilla. <laughs> God. <laughs> I don't know. I think. I think Darth for me, Zilla. I think. I think Godzilla and Star Wars would probably be the most, uh, like, animalistic and dumb. If you know what I mean, because I feel like there's so many creatures True. in, in True. Star Wars that are just kind of like these ambient background creatures that kind of get swatted away or whatever. And I think Godzilla would kind of be just a big dumb animal. Like I remember in uh, it was it Phantom Menace when they're underwater and there's that. The, that big uh -huh. sea creature that there's always uh, a bigger fish in the sea of, or whatever there's, <laughs> exactly there's a, there's a big creature and I was like I always watched that scene and I was like it's Godzilla uh, so true. I think, I think the, I there would probably be too. more yeah there probably be more focus on elements than I think any of the other uh, Godzilla's that we've talked about I feel like if we did one on the planet where what Yoda trained Luke that maybe it would have like tendrils for a for a mouth because it would you know pluck little little bugs out of the water or something because it's quite a swampy swampy planet so it would maybe get a more like fishy amphibious kind of uh design but in the desert maybe it would look more like a rancor or the uh maybe like a sar like has influences of the sarlacc so maybe it like burrows underground and like bursts up depending on you know whether it's hunting or not so there's, there's literally so many things that you can do. It's literally just dependent on the environment it's in. I like yeah. that, because I was going to say mm -hmm. the same thing. I was actually thinking that Godzilla in the Star Wars universe, based on what I've seen in The Mandalorian, The Mandalorian is my introduction to Star Wars. Uh, the first Star Wars didn't really show much of that. Um, but looking at the creatures in The Mandalorian, like that big sandworm, I feel like Godzilla would be something like that, and he would have something other than just the gimmick of his atomic breath. Maybe he blends in with the rocks. Maybe he's part of the rocks. Maybe he's an ambush predator. Um, and I think I agree that he might live in different environments. Not he, one individual, but the species. I don't think also that in the Star Wars universe, there'd be just like, oh, there's just one Godzilla left, like there is in the MonsterVerse. This is mm -hmm. space, like different planets and galaxies. So there's gonna be different Godzillas, um, different renditions of him. Some are gonna be in the desert areas or desert planets. And I think just like the uh, sandworm that we saw in that one episode of Mandalorian, that one is gonna be able to swim through. That one probably feeds on things like the sandworm. So people are very afraid of the sandworm that spews out this acid vomit. And then Godzilla is like a worse thing that that thing is afraid of. And then there are other planets that are probably water planets where he lives underwater and he's super huge. He probably has like hidden abilities in another environment where he looks like a regular big lumbering creature, but then you see him open up these membranes and start to fly or glide on the wind because of the different mm -hmm. atmosphere. Um, he probably wouldn't have atomic breath. He'd probably have this big laser beam thing that shoots out that looks kind of like the... Um, uh, the lightsabers, the... kind of, but not really. So just do a blaster sound. It just goes. Wow. <laughs> yeah, like a super huge wow. <laughs> or a planet killer. You know, alternatively, like someone else said, he could just be the strange creature. And granted, I don't think that this Godzilla would look like the Thickums Godzilla that we see that walks on land. If he's a space creature, he wouldn't have any need to have thick old thighs like that. So I could see him just being this weird floaty thing. He would look probably a lot different than how we see him now. 
Like, yeah, probably I th to the point where he wouldn't be Godzilla space. anymore. It'd definitely I be think... the most inventive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, similar to how Godzilla had different forms in Singular Point. You know, it was still right. Godzilla, but yes. you had an, uh, an aquatic yeah. Godzilla. Exactly. And... Based on his adaptation, he changed his form. Same thing with Shin Godzilla. So mm -hmm. I think it'd be like that, because Shin, when he started off, he was just this weird eel-looking aquatic creature. And if he had not come on land, like if he had to fly for any reason, or the catalyst uh, caused him to adapt quickly to fly, he would look drastically different than we see his forms in the movie. So I think mm -hmm. that would probably, it would be probably more akin to a type of Shin Godzilla or Godzilla, singular point Godzilla in the Star Wars universe, is in my opinion. You know what's funny okay. is that you could probably just take Minya from like the 60s Son of Godzilla and just shove him in A New Hope in like the bar scene and it would just, <laughs> just blend like, right hing, in. Hing, 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 in the background. Right in. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there we are. Blown there we are. That's our design in the cantina bar. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Godzilla in Star Wars is really, it's almost too hard to answer, because he could be anything. He could be anything that we've mentioned so far. He could be like this big, you know how like the ocean is usually Godzilla's home and his terrain? Well, what if space is terrain and it's this exactly. like huge giant... Exactly, if he has like giant, 16 eyes, if yeah, he and just he, two eyes. And, he, and instead of attacking Japan or, you know, countries, he attacks, attacks whole planets. 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 Yeah, so Ghidorah. like... Exactly, he kind of becomes a Ghidorah, so maybe you'd have that sort of element. Yeah, he could, he could be anything in Star Wars, because Star Wars really is anything. I mean, you yeah. drop Godzilla on a hundred different planets in Star Wars, he's going to look like a hundred different things. It's just yeah. like limitless possibilities. Yeah. I think yeah, that's one Star thing Wars. we agree on at least, is that it is entirely, like, environmental dependent. I think you could go mm -hmm. wacky as long as you understand, like, nature is, like, a, a canvas, a blank canvas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And given that he's in outer space, normally the outer space animals are the ones that are the biggest because they have no, no gravity uh, constraints, yes, they right? Yeah. Gravitational pull. So they can get really, really, really big. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, just Probably like how eat stars and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah you can go that big. Star you can in the distance. You're like, oh my god. Yeah, you could go anywhere with Star Wars. <laughs> so all you say is, oh my god. <laughs> He's just a blob. Anyway. Time to leave. Yes, you could go anywhere with Godzilla in this franchise. Given that this is the most vast setting for any franchise, it's safe to assume that Godzilla's look will vary depending on where he lives. Terrestrial Godzillas would have coloration and corporal adaptations that match their surroundings. They could also vary in size. An exclusively terrestrial Godzilla would possibly be much smaller than an aquatic Godzilla, and most definitely smaller than a Godzilla that spends most of its time in outer space. The variations are limitless, especially for a Godzilla that thrives in the cosmos. Its extraterrestrial look and its odd appendages are all a result of millions of years of adaptations in this environment. Could these giant creatures be Force-sensitive? Or would they seek out to also restore balance in the Force, just as Godzilla restores balance on Earth? Let us know in the comments. Well, I gotta say, my favorite concept or concepts for Godzilla obviously has been this last one, Star Wars, because it could go literally anywhere. Is anything? You yeah. could, mm -hmm. yeah, you could, you could put him in this planet. Or you could put him in outer space, underwater. I mean, it, it, this is the perfect place for a space Godzilla. As you can see, Godzilla is one of the creatures that can be in any single cinematic universe but you can still make it into a godzilla and i remember uh i was in another podcast over on da over with danger bill and we mentioned just that that godzilla the beauty about this animal is that you can put him anywhere and it'll still be a godzilla yeah. so we'll go ahead and, and leave it at that uh thank you guys for listening to this point uh, make sure you subscribe to danger bill make sure you subscribe to altiori and follow kaiju news outlet uh, we'll just go ahead and end it here and thank you guys for watching subscribe. Thank you everybody for being here. Peace. I love you Amen mm -hmm. Ooh. I'll go I'll go ahead and leave the amen there <laughs> amen. Amen. Good luck drawing one for amen. Star Wars <laughs>